Greetings, school families. Hopefully everybody had a wonderful Easter celebration. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Uh, we'll start our devotion here for Tuesday, April 14th, as we begin week three of Virtual Learning Week. And uh, we'll start off with a, uh, a prayer. Let's all pray together. Dear Lord, today we look into an empty grave. Help us all to see and believe that Jesus has risen just as he said he would. Amen. So there you see a glass of water. There's two ways of looking at this glass of water. Some people would look at this glass of water and say, oh, that glass, water, glass of water is half full. There's something in there. Others might say, oh, that's not a full glass of water. It's half empty. So really, it's all a matter of how you look at it. You know what? Now that we're talking about water here, I'm a little parched. So let me, uh, there we go. Okay, I, I just drank the water. Well, I guess I saw that, didn't I? Uh, the debate whether or not it's half full or half empty just by, by drinking it. Um, but you know what? Some would still maybe have different perspectives on this one. Some would say, oh, there's nothing left in there. He drank it all. It's empty, the glass. Others might say, oh, it's an empty glass. A glass just waiting to be filled with pure, refreshing water. So again, it's all how you look at it. It all depends on your perspective. Today we're going to hear the story of Jesus and the empty tomb. Uh, we're going to hear about the reaction. This is the day after uh, Jesus was put in the tomb, after he was crucified. And uh, this, this scene... Uh, involves um, an empty tomb. It involves Mary Magdalene. It also involves Peter and John, two of the disciples, and also a foot race. So let's uh, hear John 20, verses 1 to 13. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one who Jesus loved, we know that that's John, and said, they've, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So again, what does that show about Mary? Somebody must have taken him, right? The, the body, Jesus could not have risen on his own. So that's her perspective at this time. Uh, that would change later on. Verse three, so Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb First, so John wins the foot race. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Rather cautious. And then, of course, brave, bold Peter storms in. Verse 6, then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. Verse 9, they still did not understand from Scripture what, what uh, that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. Now this is not Mary, the mother of Jesus. It's Mary Magdalene, Jesus' friend. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, verse 12, and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. Verse 13, they asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. All right, so Mary Magdalene comes to the tomb. She's looking to anoint Jesus' body with spices, and she comes to find the tomb empty. Um, the, the linen that, uh, that he was wrapped in, his body was wrapped in, is lying there, and then the, the headpiece... Uh, that he was wrapped in is just it's, it's like someone neatly folded it there. Now, if somebody were to steal the body, they would not have taken the time to unwrap the body. Uh, but this is you know what uh, Mary uh, is thinking that someone has stolen her savior, and she is sad. So then she tells Peter and John, those are the two disciples that she sees, um, and says that they've taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where he is. So then there's a foot race, and I would imagine that John would be the one in front since he beat Peter at the, at the foot race. So they race to the tomb, 
And um, that's probably John on the outside, right? Because Peter was the one who, even though he lost the foot race, he ran right in. John was a little bit more cautious, you know, uh, didn't exactly want to, you know, want to, uh, you know, just go right into a, a tomb. Um, so, like, if they were both at a haunted house, uh, Peter would would think that was just the coolest thing ever, right? And John might kind of, you know, there might be someone jumping out at me lurking on the other side of that wall and might be a little bit more cautious. And that was kind of their personalities anyway. Um, so back to, uh, we'll, we'll start with, let's, uh, let's start with Mary. Okay. So Mary, what did she, what was her take on all this? Well, basically, um, Mary looked and was sad. All right. She didn't even go inside the tomb at all. Uh, she just stood outside the tomb and, and cried because she feared that someone had stolen the body of Jesus. We're told that uh, John, who's who's on the outside at this point, eventually he comes in, but you know he just kind of uh, he believes. He doesn't quite understand probably everything that's going on, even though he should have. Jesus had said and told them that this is what was going to happen. Um, but you know he just uh, he he does believe though that Jesus had risen. Uh, and Peter was one kind of a more uh, of a curious nature than, uh, than anything. All right. Um, and so he thought, hmm, this is very interesting. Let's investigate. And so he became curious and started investigating the contents of the tomb. So how do you look at it? We talked about Peter being curious over all of this. Mary was sad over all of this. And John believed. So I think it's pretty much the re those three reactions are pretty much the same reactions that people have at the story of the uh, of the resurrection today. You know, some are curious and think, "Oh, that's a pretty good story. I want to hear more about it." Uh, others, you know, maybe are just sad. It's, it's a sad story. You know, somebody died. Uh, others might also believe, like you and me. Do you believe that Jesus rose? Well. We should, because uh, we know that we needed a savior. We needed a savior from sin. We needed someone to defeat death so that you and I can defeat death. And because Jesus lives, we all will live. Because of what Jesus did on Easter, because he rose from the dead, we can go to a funeral knowing that the person who we are burying, the person in the casket who is no longer living here on this earth will be in heaven someday. And we will see them, and we take that comfort. I like it when um, a funeral service, some churches call those services a, a, a Christian victory service instead of a funeral service, because that's exactly what it is. Uh, we all receive that crown of life, eternal life in heaven, because of all that Jesus did for us. So, uh, hopefully we had a good Easter celebration Hopefully we had a, a good Lenten season in, in the sense that we were able to think and hear about all that Jesus did for us on his road to the cross. Uh, then we also knew that sin is serious and Jesus had to be punished for our sins. We also know that there needed to be a sacrifice and that's what Jesus was. But we also needed uh, to have someone defeat death, which Jesus also did. That was, uh, you know, he, why the tomb was empty, because Jesus had risen and had defeated death. Later, he's going to show himself to his disciples, and eventually all of them will not just be curious. All of them, not only will they understand, but they will also believe. Now, Thomas, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's going to have to be shown the nail marks, uh, as we'll hear about uh, in a future devotion. Um, however, we don't need to see that. We have something that's even better, and that's God's word. We have uh, sermons to listen to. We have devotions to listen to that tell us exactly what Jesus did for us. And uh, we are told that we are blessed because we did not see the events unfold uh, on this Easter day, yet we still believe. And so blessed are those who have uh, not seen and yet believe, and that's you and me. We'll now say the Lord's Prayer. Let's all pray this together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, children, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let me hear you. Very nice. Uh, so Easter Sunday, two days ago, Ethan Scherzberg celebrated a birthday. Uh, hopefully he had a good day. Uh, he is in seventh grade. And so... Um, God be with you till we meet again. You'll be getting a devotion Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of this week. So God's blessings on your day.